Welcome back to the channel where I go ahead and actually review brand new streaming content on those streaming platforms to let you know if it's worth your time. I'm going to give you my recommendations up front and hopefully you can stay longer to go ahead and actually see my justification. So today we're going to go and actually take a look at The Union on Netflix. Now for target audience members and by target I mean if you're a fan of action spy comedies, buddy cop movies, definitely if you're a fan of like Holly Berry or Mark Wahlberg, I'm going to go ahead and actually recommend that you put this on your playlist to go ahead and actually do on a lazy Saturday. Not your must-see playlist, but, you know, a little bit further down the line. However, if you are a casual viewer, that those are not your main genres, you're not a fan of spy comedies or buddy cops, not particular on actors or anything like that, this is going to be a skip it film. So those are my recommendations. Stay tuned on how I came up with those recommendations. How dangerous is it going to be? Piece of cake. So, The Union is actually an action comedy spy film that actually stars Mark Wahlberg as Mike McKenna, Holly Berry as Roxanne Hall, and J.K. Simmons as Tom Brennan. Not to mention a lot of character actors like Mike Holter, who I loved in Luke Cage, or Jackie Earl Haley, or Adebisi from, he's still always going to be Adebisi from, uh, he's still always going to be Adebisi from HBO's Oz, you know? So there's a lot of good character actors in this. So here's a synopsis of the movie. Construction worker Mike is thrust into the world of espionage when his high school sweetheart, Roxanne, recruits him for a high stakes intelligence mission. So when you go ahead and actually take a look at the premise of that, you're going to go ahead and actually notice that we don't have necessarily a unique premise here. This film continues Netflix's continuing trend of trying to get top tier Hollywood talent of, of stars of the past and present. And then they kind of put them in these random projects to kind of see what's going to happen with them. And they kind of hope for like a word of the mouth or even like a, the natural the natural potential of the stars or what have you to kind of carry the vibe and attitude so that other people go and actually get onto the platform and stream and watch it. That formula has kind of had various different levels of success. If you go and actually look at films like uh, They Clone Tyrone, The Irishman, Dolomite Is My Name, those are excellent movies that are original network, that are original Netflix productions and they were awesome, star studded and all that. But then I can also go ahead and actually point out like Heart of Stone or Red Notice that just weren't good, you know, whether you talk about uh, critically or with the fans. And <clears throat> while no actors, production crew, uh, producers, etc., they don't go ahead and actually set out to make bad movies. There's a lot of different factors that go into that. But whether it's the scripts, whether it's the stories, the acting, the action, comedy, whatever, these movies by Netflix are more misses than hits when they go ahead and actually put these stars together. Here we go ahead and actually have, again, another star-studded cast that goes for one of my favorite genres, a spy thriller, spy comedy type of genre. So I'm very much a target audience for this type of film. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at it and review it and see why I came up with the suggestions that I did. Now, I do go ahead and actually take a look at brand new movies to streaming content. Matter of fact, the ones that are exclusive to streaming content, just to see if they're worth your time. I watch them so you don't have to. If you like how that sounds, do me a favor, click like, share, subscribe. And now let's dive into the review. So after going and actually watching the film and then kind of looking at the trailers of what they were trying to get over, I always like to go ahead and actually just up front and kind of say what this film is kind of like, if so you can kind of wrap your mind around it. This film is very much kind of like um, the earlier versions of Mission Impossible, like the first one and two, uh, maybe even three, uh, as far as uh, the characters, the setup, plot lines, all that kind of good stuff on there. Um, as well as if I go and actually mix in a movie that I've seen before, like Night and Day. I know some people will go and actually compare it to some other things like Mr. and Mrs. Smith, whatever. Um, there's a reason why I would not go and actually compare it to that. I say Night and Day is probably going to be a better, uh, better idea of like what this film is kind of like of things that's out there. So let's go ahead and actually pick it up and kind of give you that reasoning. So first and foremost, storytelling. Storytelling really goes and actually tells how well they're pacing it out. Is the story makes sense to you? Um, is it scripted well? All that kind of good stuff. For, for me, storytelling is about a C. It's very much average for this particular film. And the reason why I go and actually do that is because everything, everything later on, when you go and actually just look at it, this is a very average film that when you get to the end of it, it's there, you watched it, 
you don't feel like it's horrible, but that you, you don't feel that it's great. And here's the reason why. First and foremost, it's definitely not an original premise. We've seen the whole aspect of pulling a civilian out to go ahead and actually go with the, the superstar kick-ass uh, super spy and things like that. So that's not like an original premise or whatever. It's a little bit more lesser explore thing when it's the badass woman versus you know a badass guy, whatever. But even that has been done to various different levels of success over the years. There's this constant push um, in the union, and the union is basically like another organization out there, similar to like the CIA or FBI, MI6 or what have you. There's this push to go ahead and actually really remind us that the union is made up of like regular people that kind of seem to have the drive, purpose, or some kind of random skill set. And they're a counter to what the CIA and the FBI does when, you know, CIA and the FBI, they go ahead and actually recruit the best of the best, you know, out of military, out of colleges or whatever, I mean, like colleges, whatever the case may be, they're picking the best of the best. The union is picking people that are regular folks or what have you, and they just have that gumption and they're pulling them into this uh, espionage type of lifestyle, what have you. So that in and of itself, I guess, is a little bit of a different twist, but not enough to go ahead and actually make it unique. So when you go and actually put somebody in a situation where they barely trained for whatever you put them in automatically, it's either one or two things that are going to happen. It's either one, they're not prepared for that situation. Body count is high and you got to continue to replace your workforce in order to go ahead and actually keep this organization going on. Or two, if you've actually trained them well enough and they survive it and they kind of get out there, well, hell, then those trainers should probably go ahead and actually be uh, training or employed at the CIA or FBI or anything like that because you probably have phenomenal trainers or what have you. In either case, the premise for the union just doesn't work on a fundamental level. And so that aspect of storytelling makes it a little bit on the unbelievable side. But since we go ahead and actually have to, we have to accept that this is kind of like the little brother of the big alphabet spy agencies that we have in there. Okay, cool, fine. Let's go and actually ride with it. Now, in this one, driving the story forward was a formulaic uh, trope of needing to recover something of great importance. It's the MacGuffin aspect of things. Um, any item that they're going actually looking for is nothing new. If you've watched spy movies or what have you, this is one of those things where it's pretty much, this has been a, a trouble. I don't want to, I'm not going to spoil anything or what have you, but just let you know that it's not an item that was like very unique, you know, to the story. It's very much not. One of the things that seemed to be kind of forced and was good was the training montage that they went through to get Mark Wahlberg's character trained up. And the reason why I say that is because some of that training seemed kind of like uh, time padding, time runtime padding, meaning that they're trying to get on some extra minutes to go ahead and actually make this a viable film. It's really what people are trying to do. And I think that montage kind of was a necessary montage. But what I will say is that it did serve a purpose from the aspect of showing you that so that we can go ahead and actually validate some of the moves that come about later, because we always kind of have that thought process. Like they're going to be like a super agent at the end or what have you and things like that. And he's not like a super agent. He still makes mistakes and things like that, but we see the training and how they're trying to ramp up him getting in the field and all that kind of stuff. So there was a good and a, and a force aspect to the training aspect of it, what have you. The pacing in this film was pretty decent. Um, there's not too many scenes that drag along. There are a couple that you're just kind of like, ah, oh, this wasn't necessary or doing doing this to kind of fill time or what have you there's not a whole lot in the way of like character development like if you're going to expound upon a story then you want to go and actually do some character background type of stuff not a whole lot was attributed to that when you want to go and actually do stuff like that you want to attribute to background character work and, and things like that and there just wasn't a whole lot of that but the pacing was good enough that it got you to some action scenes and things like that because that's the, the heart of any spy thriller if you're not going to have a compelling story then show some action so the pacing was pretty decent throughout Ultimately, for storytelling, there's nothing in the way of like swerves, twists, um, or resolutions at the end that's really going to surprise or impress anybody that's a fan of this type of genre of film. It's not really going to go ahead and actually sway you to go and actually be like, oh, this is better than other films that I've seen, or they've put a unique twist on it. There's not much there in that aspect of it. And so when we go ahead and actually look at that, along with some of other creative decisions that they made on there there's just not a lot of meat on this bone like i said it's a very average type of take on there so for me i also don't think that a casual viewer is really going to go and actually be shocked by anything that's being told fans of spy movies are definitely not going to be surprised and I, honestly a casual viewer probably is going to be like oh wow this does not seem original either so storytelling for me it's very average very much a c now let's talk about the acting you know the, what we're talking about individual acting or the ensemble cast for acting i'm going to go and actually about a c plus a little bit of an upgrade there 
I very much, I'm a fan of Holly Berry, J.K. Simmons, Mike Halter, um, Adebisi. Like these are people that I really like their screen work or whatever. They're really good actors. Um, most of them have multiple hits and things of that nature. So when you go and actually have it, was it good? Mark Wahlberg, while he's not my cup of tea, I've seen him do some, you know, some good movies and things like that. I know he has uh, good acting skills or what have you. So overall, you're thinking this is a very solid cast. Should go and actually be able to pull it off. First and foremost, the dialogue in this movie was either very much basic, rudimentary, or sometimes it was just downright brutal. I feel like there were times where the actors probably wanted to go and actually say something different, but they were kind of kept very strict or rigid on what they would have to say. And some of the lines just did not feel natural, what have you. So I think it took away from them interjecting and kind of making the characters a little bit different, a little bit more believable, what have you. One of the things that I think makes this movie more tolerable as far as like, characters and things like that is that you can see that holly berry and mark Wahlberg have chemistry they're really good together uh and you pick and you pick up on that it's really a nice thing that they have going as far as liking each other being friends and they're actually friends outside of this they've been friends for i guess like 30 something years or what have you and so with that you kind of see that on film and it translates and it kind of gives you a little bit more like kind of cheering for them and, and rooting for them but the acting overall eh, i like that now, when we go ahead and actually kind of think of like the acting and the pacing and everything like that for like action scenes, because that's your big thing in a spy in a spy movie, they're decent. Um, they're not like horrible action scenes or anything like that. One thing that's really cool is that they actually did a lot of practical on location shots where they were actually doing real stunts and real action. I really applaud that. That's really a good throwback to, you know, when movies were made at a more granular level. So I like that aspect of it. There's actually even one scene in the third act which i think was actually it was worthy of being uh talked about as far as like one of the more upper echelon types of scenes in like a jason Bourne movie or a mission impossible movie or anything like that and it was a uh a uh, deal of going back and forth between like rooftop and windows as they're working their way down to ground level what have you i think that was creative it was fun or whatever i like that scene a lot but But overall, the aspect of it, there wasn't a whole lot within the action that kind of got you sucked in, whether you're talking about car chases, whether you're talking about hand-to-hand -hand combat. There wasn't a whole lot there that I felt like, oh my God, this is like killing it. They're, they're, you know, at least they've given me this. It was, again, a very much paint by the numbers type of aspect on it. So when I look at the acting of what the characters brought, br bring me in, making me feel the story, kind of like these characters are real and, and making me care about them. Again, I'm around about a C plus because a little bit above, a little bit above average, but not by much. It's kind of where the way I feel about it. So what are my like kind of last thoughts or what have you on this? Again, for target audience members, uh, you're really going ahead and actually, if you love Mark Wahlberg or you like Holly Berry or, uh, you know, this, or if you're a fan of their chemistry or anything like that together, there's going to be a lot to love on here because they're on screen a lot. Um, one or both of them are on the screen at all times in this film, which is good because they're the same power. So if you're fans of them, that you'll go ahead and actually be able to gravitate towards. Um, Holly Berry is usually her usual hot self. Mark Wahlberg knows Mark Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg is Mark Wahlberg doing his thing, what have you, and we're okay with that. Again, not a unique premise, uh, decent action, but this is kind of like one of those movies that you're going to actually turn on on Sunday when, you know, like, how oh, is there anything else? That, is there a must-watch film on that I need to go and actually watch? No. Okay. Is there something on my playlist that's really pressing that I want to watch? No? All right. Well, what else is out there? Now you got a genre that if you're a fan of the genre, you're a fan of those people, you can give it a watch. And I think you will at least not have your time wasted. For casual viewers, unfortunately, there's just not enough there to glob onto to go ahead and actually, I think, maintain a casual spectator's interest. Uh, the premise has been done better in other movies, whether we're talking about like True Lies or even Mr. and Mrs. Smith, which was actually based off of an existing relationship and marriage or what have you that was a juxtaposition of them knowing each other for years and there being that dynamic of them discovering that there's another secret life that the other one was building. So that's that was the core crux of Mr. and Mrs. Smith and why that was such a successful movie. But this one, it really doesn't go and actually bring in, I think, for a casual viewer sitting through this, you're going to kind of get turned off by the genre as a whole. And that's why I don't think that it's going to do a lot for a casual viewer. And you're better to skip it and watch one of those other types of films. But that's what I actually have for The Union on Netflix. Check it out. Roxanne Hall? Mom, how do you know that? I always liked her for you. What is she up to? <laughs> Should have seen her in high school. I appreciate you. You stay for the entire review.
I love you. You're good peoples, whatever. We're keeping the channel growing, all that kind of good stuff. Do me a favor. If you liked anything on this review, go ahead and actually click, give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you want to go ahead and actually see more reviews that I'm going to be doing, go ahead and actually subscribe to the channel. And if you're thinking, you know what? Eh, it's not my thing, whatever. Give me comments. Let me know why. Right. But go ahead and actually do me a favor. Watch one of the other videos and things like that, that YouTube really thinks that you might like of mine. But until the next time, I'll holler at you. Take care of yourself.